Hello and welcome back to Circle of Light. Um, it's been a very, very interesting times so over the last six, seven months. Um, we had an amazing year last year with Circle of Light, which was funded by Youth Music and won several awards with the tracks that were made on the album. Um, we were so, so pleased with the progress, the progress of the young people and the progress just of the whole programme. Um, and we got so excited that we um, signed a lease for a new venue, which we're in at the moment. Uh, we signed this venue with two of the companies, uh, Bill Cole and Dedicated. So three CICs signed for Fishergate Point. And then two weeks later, it was lockdown. Youth Music had given us some funding to do a live gig, give a gig week. And um, we decided we were going to do it. And then we had lockdown. So um, what happened was we decided to do a live stream. We didn't actually realise the impact that would have. So we, did, we joined forces with Hockley Hustle and we did a live gig called Light Hustle. It was watched in 15 countries by 65,000 people and we raised six and a half thousand pounds um, for freelance workers who'd obviously lost all their work. We did another festival um, which was funded by the council and lots of other people and that was called Not Stopping. We provided as many opportunities as we could for young people to be involved in live stream activities. We're doing Circle of Light 2 but uh, the difference is this time some of the participants from last year are trained mentors. We had an external agency who came in to deliver the first aid training and the health and safety training. And to do this, we had to make sure we had a room that was fit for purpose. And it took a lot of consideration. So we had um, screen dividers, we had um, ordered new tables that could only fit one person so that people didn't share tables. Uh, we had sanitizers, tissues, everything. Everyone had the temperature taken before they actually went into the room. So it gave us an idea of actually what we need to consider when we start delivering music provision again. The um, external agency who came in we were absolutely thrilled with what we'd done. They took a photograph, put it on Facebook and said, this is how to do it. So we felt we'd got some sort of idea of what was going to be expected in the future for us to be able to do this. As part of the training for these young people, we wanted them to be aware of the whole creative process that was involved in Circle of Light last year. So with this in mind, we got Liz B, who was our PR person last year, who's absolutely fantastic, to deliver a workshop with the young people. And the idea this year is they are going to be part of the PR programme. They have got to design and implement this PR programme. And we also um, invited in Ivani, um, who did um, Fly Girl and Wig Flex, and she did a fantastic workshop on marketing. Last year, we were lucky enough to have Metronome, and it was a very fluid process. It was an absolutely incredible facilities, resources, people was coming in and out of rooms. It was very collaborative. Uh, this year, we're very, very different. It is for us, just seeing what we can do. So I think it's going to be really, really interesting next week because it'll be the first time that we've had all these people together and we really don't know how lockdown has impacted on anybody. So we might get some incredible music. We might find that people can't write anything. We don't know. But I think for us, it's, it's, it's quite exciting just to have us back as a team, as a circle of light, and for the young people to just start back up. It's a bit of a kickstart. Last year we had a big live showcase with 250 people and this year they can't do that. So we've decided to do a live stream. So we've got this whole building and we've set the task for the young people to uh, design the sets, the lighting. So it's become a big package, a creative design process. And they're learning about the future really because we don't know what the future is going to be in terms of live performance or live streaming. So. Is this is real hands-on experience working with professionals. We have been working behind the scenes uh, during lockdown to brand Circle of Light. Um, so we've had the young people working on different ideas and we've come up with a be beautiful branding for this. So they came up with the idea of actually making Circle of Light masks. So they've uh, sent off and had some fabric designed. We've given them tote bags that will have gloves and the hand sanitizer. So, you know, their idea is, yes, we, you know, it is going to be difficult. We are going to be wearing masks. It is all going to be very clinical. 
but they wanted to funk it up a little bit and uh, they've, they've done this whole packaging. So we've got lanyards and have, everything is sort of like branded. So that has been like a little a side project for them. Last year we made a documentary and it was very much about the process of how to make an album in three weeks, which that was an incredible challenge in itself. This year, the documentary is going to focus on how you can actually, actually deliver safe music provision and get an album out of it. We don't know if that is possible. We haven't done it. I don't think anyone else has done it. So I think it'll be interesting. We know we're going to have lots of challenges over the next three weeks. So we want, that to, we want it to be a real honest video. Can you do it? Will it work? We, it will work, but how do we make it work? Circle of Light couldn't have happened if we hadn't have got funding from Youth Music. Uh, and that funding that we uh, received last year made an incredible difference to an awful lot of young people. And, you know, you say, you know, it was life-changing, but some of those young people have actually said it has changed their lives. Access to those little pots of funding are crucial for the arts, crucial for young people, and it's something, you know, we've got to explore further because lots of young people are suffering, lots of people are suffering around the world. So in terms of having access to music um, for mental health, this is going to be vital. Having funding from youth music to enable these young people to get out their bedrooms and come into a space uh, to work with professional people utilising industry standard equipment is vital. So this bit of public funding that's come from youth music is going to make an awful lot of difference after a terrible, terrible experience. So thank you, youth music.